Hi, this is Susanna Braidwaring, and this is an introduction to motivational maps. This is me on the right hand side, and we're a family owned business based in Poole, and we've been senior practitioners um, of the motivational maps, working at the very highest level, um, and working with the maps for over five years now. So why motivational maps? Well, firstly, leaders, managers and recruiters need a different approach. They're finding that the traditional approach just isn't working for them as effectively because our customers now have so much choice and therefore the market we're, we're working in is much more competitive. In addition, we're also competing to both attract and retain our talent. So. Organisations now need to adapt quickly and frequently. They need to adapt what they supply, who to, how they supply it. They need to adapt how they recruit, how they retain talent. And all of that requires agility. Now, agility, which is the ability to move quickly and easily, requires strong leaders, teams and people. Because the leaders need to know what to do and they need to be able to do it quickly, decisively, and to engage and give their team confidence. The teams and the people need to be able to move quickly as a single unit to be able to respond, to understand why the change is better for them than the previous ways, and to discard the things that no longer serve them and embrace the things that do. And the people then need to actually be very resilient in these times of change because the new ways aren't tried and tested. So they're taking a risk. Some of them will love that. Some of them will feel intensely uncomfortable. So it requires a new way of actually being a high level of trust in both the organisation, their leader, their team and themselves. So strong leaders, teams and individuals need direction. They need to know where they're going. They need the skills to be able to get there. And critically, they need motivation. And in our experience, motivation is the key ingredient because motivation will determine the direction why, in this case, the boat is rowing and where you want to go. Because if people don't believe that the direction is right, then they won't actually be motivated to do anything to achieve it. They'll actually be holding back the team or the organisation. And if they're not motivated, they won't adapt, adjust, obtain the new skills, discard the old skills, they'll be using old ways of behaviour. And again, that just does not make them agile. So motivation really is the key ingredient of helping people to go where you want them to go in a way that actually they're motivated to achieve it. So why motivational maps as a tool? Well, there are five reasons here. Firstly, the overriding feedback we get is they are scarily accurate. And that accuracy is really key because it helps us to understand what drives behaviour. And when we understand why people want to do things and why they don't want to do things, we can help them to change that behaviour and adjust it to the desired behaviour. It's an online questionnaire. Critically, it only takes 15 minutes or less to complete. So it's really quick. It's very easy to do. People are not offline from their work for very long. The reports are very user friendly and that's really important because when people are revealing what drives them, it's actually quite threatening for many of the people that we want to engage, whereas the motivational map, map reports are actually user friendly. It helps them to understand themselves better and therefore they're more engaging. We're not hiding anything from them. The maps operate as an individual, a team and an organisational level, each with detailed reports, and the maps are incredibly insightful and yet simple in their design, and there are many applications. So very briefly, in the, in the motivational maps, there are nine motivators in these three clusters, green relationships, red achievement, blue growth. And as an example, for a team, this is team A, their motivation level is 86%, which we can see up here. You know, typically, what we'd see is a motivation level of around 60%. And here's their profile showing the nine motivators in the score in which they ranked them of importance. 
with the three blue motivators at the top, they actually have a consultancy profile, which is good because actually that's what they do. And we can see also that the lowest motivators are director, which means they neither want to lead a team, they're not motivated to lead a team, um, nor are they motivated to really promote themselves. So in terms of selling themselves and getting good PR um, and good, a good a well-known profile, that's also something that does not motivate them. So that will sort of hold them back potentially, and that's an area we can have a look at and decide if it, if, if it is something that needs working on. And this, this report from the, um, from the Motivation Map report shows you the alignment and the potential areas of conflict between team members. So we can see on the left, strong areas of alignment. So lots of people motivated by making a difference, by freedom and independence, by innovation, but only a few people, or none in this case, motivated by safety and security, um, authority and attention and recognition, but lots of people are demotivated by these areas. And where there's a high and a low, this is an area of potential conflict, moving at different speeds and with different values. So the most common use of maps is in creating greater understanding of ourselves, so greater ownership of our own motivation, and then each other through motivation to overcome the differences and really pull together as a team. And quite often we'll use interactive workshops which include linking the motivators to company values, our vision and objectives, and how our differences strengthen us. By linking how we're motivated to the company values, for example, we can actually not only understand and increase our own engagement to the organisation, we can understand that our team actually do believe in the same values, they just portray it perhaps in a different way. But it really seeks out that alignment and creates much greater understanding and therefore trust and therefore an ability to be more agile because you move with the team rather than questioning the team. And the maps have cross-organisational application as well. So one of the things that I particularly love about the maps is their sheer simplicity and user-friendly approach and yet the depth of insight and the breadth of application across organisations at all different levels. So as you can tell, we're very passionate about motivational maps here at Astro Business. And we can see where motivation is significant in all seven areas of the faster growth. That's all of these areas here, which is our model for faster growth within organisations. Right, we've talked about vision and values. You can see how a strategy needs to be motivating to the individuals, and in particular the leaders. And even coming down to the objectives, if the team doesn't believe in the objectives, then they're not motivated to achieve them. And that results in poor performance. And for motivational maps, we often start off on the left hand side at the bottom with an individual map. Um, feedback is optional, but very, very valuable to give those areas um, of insight into our own blind spots. We can then move up into a team map so we understand what motivates the team as a whole, as a single unit, as well as the individuals. We can deliver a team workshop to create that greater understanding of ourselves and each other. And we can actually look at organisations and here we start to really look at the culture as well as the teams and which teams are performing well or motivated well and why and the common themes and where they can conflict and align together. Now, at the top level, as senior practitioners, we can actually accredit both internal and external motivational map practitioners to deliver all of these things in-house. And so a few more testimonials here and a little bit more about Aspirin Business. So if you'd like more information, then you have the details of the brochures and just get in touch. So you can subscribe to our newsletter, you can give us a call or just get in touch via email. Thank you.